last new tip, she received her Master's of Science in Education and Social Change from the University, University of Miami in 2012. Since joining Teach for America as a Miami Dance Corps member in 2012, Ms. Bowles has helped to develop over 1,000 students and teachers along the East Coast. She has served as a teacher, math, and science coach, curriculum specialist, a dungeon professor, community organizer, and board member in Miami, New Orleans, and Atlanta. In 2016, Ms. Bowles, Ms. Bowles <laughs> founded Proof Incorporated on the south side of Atlanta, a value-driven intergenerational ecosystem for problem solvers. Proof is an acronym for Plans, Resources, and Opportunities for Organized Freedom. Her time as an educator ultimately led her to run for public office in 2016 and 2018. She was elected in Clay she was elected to Clayton County Public Schools Board on May 22, 2018. It was formally sworn in on January 7, 2019. Um, now welcome Jasmine Bowles. <laughs> to tell you how proud of you I am. First, I'd like to acknowledge and give thanks to God. I'd also like to acknowledge and give thanks to the ancestors of the Creek, Cherokee, Muskegee, and Oconee tribes of Georgia, and all indigenous Africans who once occupied the sacred land on which we are gathered here tonight. Before I proceed, please join me in taking a moment of silence to show our gratitude to all of those who've come before us. Thank you. If you are a student in the room, please stand. Thank you. We'd like to acknowledge you, all of you, with a round of applause. From this point forward, I'm talking to you. And as far as I'm concerned, the adults in the room are just in here eavesdropping on our conversation. Thank you for being incredible. Tonight, we celebrate social studies and history scholars who have explored people, places, and things. It is also Black History Month. Since part of the word history is story, let's have a little story time. I'll share my personal story, some of our collective story, and invite you to join me as we write the next part of that story together. My name is Jasmine Bowles, and as I look into the audience tonight, I see myself in each of you. I attended Brown Elementary, Mundysville Middle, and Lovejoy High School. After graduating from Lovejoy, I attended Emory University, where I majored in English and African Studies. As part of my study, I moved to South Africa for a semester and attended school at the University of Cape Town. I was heading to law school after college. So I moved there to study apartheid and the political movement that abolished it only 15 years before I got there. For fun, I decided to study and volunteer in the townships as a sixth grade teacher. But those villages and my South African students changed my life. In South Africa, I learned that children inherit their country's revolution and that we can transform societies faster in classrooms than in courtrooms. If I was sad when it was time for me to come home, but I knew there were villages here in America where I could continue to serve the students who needed me most. After graduating from Emory, I joined Teach for America and moved to Miami and became a teacher for Miami-Dade County Public Schools. 
the fourth largest school district in America. While teaching full time, I received my master's in education and social change from the University of Miami. I was placed at an F school in Little Haiti, one of Miami's toughest communities. Our F school was recently taken over by the state as part of a turnaround district. Adding to my luck, my principal hired me, an English major, as the math and science teacher <laughs> for 75 fourth graders. One third of them spoke Haitian Creole, one third of them spoke Spanish, and one third of them spoke English. Over 50% of them were immigrants. The odds were stacked against us, but I love a challenge. And I was excited to continue my mission toward educational equity. Anytime I heard someone doubt my babies in Little Haiti, it made me angry and I wanted us to prove them wrong. Tonight, I'll tell you the same thing I told my fourth graders on the first day of school. You have haters, and your haters love to use data against you. According to your haters and their data, they don't think you'll graduate. They're not sure you can learn math, learn to read, write, and speak well. Some of them don't think your parents care. If that makes you mad, good. Let's change the data they use against us. Use their doubt as motivation. Your one and only job is to prove your haters wrong. Nothing's impossible and you're proof. So I wrote proof on my board and it stayed there all year. Thanks to our incredible village of teachers, leaders, and volunteers in Little Haiti, by the end of our time together, our scholars won statewide essay contests. They won the county math bowl. 100% of our scholars made gains on the annual state test. I heard they still use our accountable talk videos in county professional developments for teachers. In those two short years, we moved from an F school to a C school, and our scholars proved everybody wrong who thought they couldn't do it. Sometimes they even shocked me. Because of my students in South Africa and Miami, I know what's possible in classrooms everywhere. From there, I moved closer to family in New Orleans and became a teacher, instructional coach, curriculum specialist, professor, community organizer, and eventually a school board member. I left inspired by my students, colleagues, and community. When I returned home to Atlanta, I decided to run for office. The first time, I lost. But when I didn't come in last, last, I knew I was onto something. During that time, proof became more than a mindset. I founded a community organization called Proof Incorporated, and we worked to provide plans, resources, and opportunities for organized freedom. I didn't give up, and I ran two years later. Because of your parents and neighbors, I stand before you tonight as your newly elected school board member here at Clayton County Public Schools, and the youngest person to ever hold this seat. I was sworn in just last month, and we made history together. I'm literally a human story of what can happen to little girls who grow up here in Clayton County. Together, our stories provide proof that data, stereotypes, and even histories can be disproved. Enough about me. Let's talk a little bit about us. I love Clayton County. There's a lot to be proud of here. But do we really know our collective history? The boundaries of Clayton County originates around 1818. We opened by acknowledging God and the ancestors because as hard as it is to believe, like most land in the South, this land was also stolen. About 20,000 indigenous people of Georgia 
forcibly migrated to the Indian Territory in Oklahoma between 1834 and 1836. The rest were eradicated. Thousands more fought and died during the Civil War. If you Google it, you'll learn we were named after Senator Augustine Smith Clayton. He was a politician from Virginia, but I wanted to learn a little more about Mr. Clayton because I know history belongs to those who write it. Here's what was a little harder to find. In 1837, he gave a speech in Athens for the Colonization Society, in which he said, the increase of free blacks is an evil to the state. The Colonization Society offered a remedy and afforded means by which liberty, with the consent of the master, may be conferred beneficially upon the slaves. So that's who the leaders who came before us named our county after. Let's consider other local history. There's another story about a little girl in Clayton County. Her grandfather owned slaves in Jonesboro, and, and her father fought for the Confederacy. When she was five years old in 1906, there was a four-day race riot in Atlanta. Close your eyes and imagine what she witnessed. If we gave that little girl a pen, what kind of story do you think she'd write? Well, that little girl would grow up to become one of Clayton County's biggest stars. She's author Margaret Mitchell, and later she would write Gone with the Wind. Even though it was criticized for glorifying slavery, it remains the most successful film in box office history, winning 10 Academy Awards. Thanks to Gone with the Wind, Patty McDaniel became the first African-American person to ever win an Academy Award for Best Supporting Actress. Hattie McDaniel won that Academy Award for playing Mammy, a controversial role that perpetuated some stereotypes about black women in the media. The setting for Gone with the Wind is Clayton County. That's part of how we blew up. What's in it? Well, those who read the book well, remember the cotton plantation was named Tara. That's still the name of our busiest highway here in Clayton County, Tara Boulevard. The main character's lover lived on another plantation, Twelve Oaks. That's the name the leaders who came before us chose for our county's largest stadium. Scarlett O'Hara is the main character. And I have many friends who grew up in neighborhoods with names like O'Hara Village or River's Edge Plantation. I personally live near a road named after Jeff Davis. Every single day, many of us pass Confederate cemeteries in downtown Jonesboro. And that you can even tour two plantation homes here in Clayton County, Stately Oaks and Ashley Oaks. It's all preserved as history. So this was such a big deal at the time that Margaret Mitchell, author of Bond with the Wind, was inducted into the Georgia Women of Achievement and into the Georgia Writers Hall of Fame. This film is preserved in the National Film Registry and the Library of Congress. So history is fascinating, but it belongs to those who write it. That was her truth. Where are the other voices from Clayton County during that time? Due to their forced removal to this very day, there are no federally recognized indigenous tribes in Georgia. Unfortunately, we must assume that Clayton County's black and brown voices from the era aren't missing. They were erased. History belongs to those who write it. Now, now it's time to reclaim and retell our story. Now, Clayton County is home to the state's largest employer and the world's busiest airport. We have the fifth largest school district in Georgia, our own university. We're home to the Georgia Archives. We have a world-renowned water authority. We hosted competitions for the Olympics. 
and are the most reliably liberal county in Georgia. Our elected leaders look like our residents, and we have an entirely democratic legislative delegation in a red state. Almost nine out of our 10 residents voted for Obama, and we sent a, we've sent a Democrat to the U.S. House of Representatives in each of the last five congressional elections. In 2018, 85% of us voted for the Democratic presidential candidate. So no county in Georgia votes blue like Clayton County. We actually agree with each other here. We are creating a community that you can be proud to inherit. What will you do with all that power? Since history belongs to those who write it, we must write, be written about, or prepare to get left out. Since we have all this unity, what will we accomplish together next? What's the next part of our story? That's why I'm here tonight, talking to you. I'm in a room full of historians and history makers who will not only study history, but one day own, write, and become it. You will become authors who write about your studies as anthropologists, ethnographers, teachers, doctors, and lawyers. I just got here, but I'm already looking for who will replace me. Nothing is impossible. The person who will replace me may be within the sound of my voice. Right here in this room. I met a 19-year-old school board member in Louisiana just last month. He's all of our proof that you're never too young to lead. So, we still have haters. They still love to use data against us. And history still belongs to those who write it. In case that young leader is listening here tonight, this is what you need to know. Here are three tips for anyone who wants my job. Number one, let's have a sense of urgency. Act like we have problems to solve. Do you ever see some of our friends or neighbors just moseying in about their day? Just walking around like racism's gone and everybody's free? James Baldwin said, I was born here almost 60 years ago and I'm not gonna live another 60 years. You always told me, it takes time. Well, it's taken my father's time, my mother's time, my uncle's time, my brother's and my sister's time. How much time do you want me to wait for your progress? He said that almost 60 years ago. The time is now, and you are the authors of our present and future history. Act like justice is an emergency. Learn, read, and lead like we don't have a second to waste. Because we don't. Number two, let's use our youth while we have it. Stokely Carmichael said, our grandfathers had to run, run, run. My generation is out of breath. We ain't running no more. Our elders ran so that we could fly. Don't run from your fears. Don't run from the truth. Don't run from your goals. Don't run from challenges. Don't run from high expectations. And don't run from love. We believe in you. Don't run. You stand firm. Stand firm in your identity. Stand firm in your truth. Stand firm in your beliefs. Stand firm in your values. The best time to fail or lose a competition, lose money, or lose a campaign is when you're young. There's a village around you to pick you up again. Take risks. Never be afraid to fail. And when in doubt, look at me and other young leaders in your community for evidence or proof. The only competitions you'll always lose are the ones you don't enter. Number three, let's look in the mirror when we're looking for answers. God does a lot of things, but God does not make mistakes. Most likely, you are the solution that you're looking for. You were put on this earth for a purpose, with a mission 
from God that belongs to no one but you. No one can execute it except you. And if you don't complete your mission, no one will. But if you don't tell your story, someone else will do it for you. Don't let someone else write your story. History belongs to those who write it. Thank you for embodying leadership and scholarship through your social studies fairs projects. I love you and I'm proud of you. Let's continue to study and make history together. Thanks. Balls for that inspiring message. Thank you so much. Youngest board member elected, and we are all.